Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I will just start us off slowly with um, some housekeeping, basic information. Hi, my name is Kate. I work for San Francisco Public Library. I am very grateful and glad that Nick and Ugo from Mayor's Office of Housing are here with us today to talk about this fantastic program. Thank you both. And I think that is all from me. Nick, am I forgetting anything? Uh, no, I think you, you nailed it. Okay, well then I guess we can get started. Thank you guys again so much for being here and please take it away. All right, um, Ugo, do you wanna kick it off or should I kick it off? Oh, please do, Nick, I'll be here to back you up. Okay, uh, so I'm Nick Pagolato. So I work with the Mayor's Office of Housing and Community Development. I'm one of their uh, housing, or I'm sorry, community development specialist. Um, and I work with Ugo on a number of community development endeavors, but this is probably uh, the most important of them right now. Um, we do have a local program to help assist tenants who've fallen behind on their rent. Uh, it works in conjunction with a state program um, that we also uh, work closely with. Um, and right now we are really interested in making sure that we reach as far and as deep as we possibly can to make sure that uh, tenants are aware if they need rental assistance that they can either access our program or the state program. Um, and um, first, let me thank uh, the library because this is one of uh, our opportunities to do just that. Um, and we're gonna try to do this um, hopefully in a way that's as accessible and informative as possible. I'm going to try to keep my presentation to about 20 minutes and walk through the basics of the program. Um, and then folks are gonna have an opportunity to ask questions of us. So uh, I will take this away. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there are two programs. There's a state program and there's a local program. Um, we work with the local program, but we do encourage folks to apply to the state program. The state program uh, is for those folks who have fallen behind in their rent uh, any time from uh, April of 2020 all the way to March of this year. Um, and they can help with up to six months of rental assistance. Um, our program uh, works to uh, assist folks who have uh, fallen behind, or rather not six months, they can actually cover the entire amount of, of rent that you may have fallen behind for uh, during that period of time. But our program uh, is in operation from April of this year moving forward, and our program will continue to operate uh, basically until we run out of funding. Um, both of our programs receive funding uh, from the state. Um, and we do uh, work closely again with uh, both the state as well, I'm sorry, with the, from the federal government. Uh, and we do work closely with both the state and the federal government uh, to make sure that we are working uh, as, um, as uh, effectively as possible to get funding out the door. Um, one of the things that we want to ensure is that folks um, have as much access as possible uh, to the program. And so we've set up a website, uh, which you'll see here on our screen. Uh, you can go to sf.gov uh, forward slash rent help. Um, and if you have the ability to access uh, the, the website through a computer, uh, or you have a friend who can help you uh, access the, the webpage, you can apply yourself directly. But um, we do also have community partner organizations who can help you to do uh, exactly that and can walk you through the process and help you to apply. Um, if you go to sfadc.org, um, they have a full listing of our partner organizations and you see that on your screen right now, um, which can help you in a number of different languages and they provide assistance uh, in helping you apply either with a paper application or they can help you walk through uh, the website itself. Um, the website is translated into three different languages other than English. You can access the website in Spanish, you can access it in Chinese, and you can also access it uh, in Filipino. 
and as I mentioned, our community partners uh, can help you in those languages as well as a variety of other languages. So if you go to that website, uh, sfadc.org, um, you can find assistance with application. Um, our program can help you with rent uh, for six months. Um, it can cover three months back rent and three months of prospective rent. Um, it's free to apply to this program. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our program exists for folks who have fallen behind in their rent from April of this year forward. Uh, of course, there are many folks who are going to have uh, need for assistance uh, for a period of time that goes before April of this year. So we do uh, encourage everybody, if you have a need that goes, uh, that exists from before April of this year, you can apply to the state program as well. Um, and the state's program can be accessed uh, at the website that you see here, housingiskey.com. Um, and you can apply, of course, to both programs. You can apply for rental assistance between April and March uh, of this year through the state program. And then you can apply separately uh, for assistance from April moving forward uh, through our state or through our local program. Um, now, uh, in order to be eligible to, uh, to get assistance from us, uh, there are three basic things, three basic criteria uh, that you have to meet. Um, so you do have to have had a financial hardship during pandemic, um, which means that you uh, would have qualified for unemployment benefits or, or experienced a reduction in your household income. Um, you also have to have uh, a, demon a demonstrated risk of uh, experiencing homelessness or housing instability. Um, so this means that you can show us a past due rent notice. Uh, it can also mean that you're living in unsafe uh, or unhealthy living conditions, uh, or it can also mean if you've been able to keep up with your rent, uh, but you've had to take out a personal loan, or if you've maxed out your credit cards in order to pay your rent, or, or even if you've fallen behind in paying your utility bills in order to cover your rent, that can qualify you for, uh, for rental assistance through our program. Um, it's also based on income. Um, so we uh, do have a requirement that uh, applicants be at 80% uh, or below of uh, HUD's area median income. And you see that listed here on the screen uh, for one person, uh, it's at $102,000. For a two person household, it's at $117,000. Uh, we do prioritize those households which are uh, very low income and extremely low income, meaning that we prioritize those applications that are at 50% of AMI and below. Um, it doesn't mean that we are not going to assist uh, those folks who are at uh, over 50%, but we are going to uh, move those who have a lower income to the front of, of, the, of the line. Uh, and one thing that folks should know right now is that, um, uh, as I was telling our host earlier, uh, our program is extremely low barrier. And if you apply, uh, there's a very high likelihood that you're going to uh, receive aid. Um, we've received over 4,500 applications so far, uh, and 98% uh, of those applications have been selected to move forward to the verification stage uh, of the program. Um, one other thing that I, I wanted to, to quickly note here is that for tenants who have fallen behind on their rent, um, there are protections in place that have been put uh, into effect by the state as well as by our local government. Um, so if you were not able to pay any rent uh, or if you're only able to pay some rent between March 1st uh, to August 31st, 2020, your landlord cannot evict you for not having been able to pay rent uh, during that period of time. Um, and if you do have a landlord who's threatening you with eviction, um, there are many resources that you can take advantage of uh, to receive counseling on how to respond to those threats as well as potentially uh, legal assistance. Um, and when you go to that 
uh, uh, San Francisco Anti-Displacement Coalition website, uh, you'll find a list of organizations that can assist you with that. Um, if you have received uh, uh, a notice of, uh, of past due rent for that period of time, uh, you do have to give your landlord uh, a 50, uh, declaration rather of financial distress. And you'll see here on our website, uh, there is a link that is uh, to a, a website that will provide you with that declaration to respond in case you did receive uh, a notice of non-payment of rent, which you are required to uh, provide to your landlord. Um, if you were not able to pay rent between September 1st, uh, of 2020 and September 30th, uh, the law does require something different of you. Um, it does require for you not only to file that declaration of financial distress, um, it also requires you by September 30th uh, of this year to pay at least 25% uh, of the rent that's owed. And you don't have to keep up with that uh, month after month, you can do that. Uh, in a lump sum payment. Um, and if you do that, uh, then again, you are protected completely uh, against being able to be evicted uh, for non-payment of rent. Um, now, as I mentioned, we are working in partnership with uh, various organizations who are helping our tenants not only to uh, fill out applications for rental assistance, uh, but can also help you uh, if you are being unlawfully threatened with eviction. So uh, if that is the case, as I mentioned, you can go to that SFADC website uh, and you will find information there uh, that can help you to, uh, to navigate um, and to find organizations that can help you. So um, with that, uh, uh, that is my brief overview uh, of the program. And I'm sure uh, there are now probably many, many questions uh, that folks have. Thank you, Nick. There are none in the chat, uh, but we do encourage uh, attendees to either use the chat with any questions or comments they may have, or uh, please feel free to unmute yourselves and uh, uh, ask your questions. So we have a question here. Um, would you recommend applying to both programs or one? It depends on what period of time you're behind on your rent. Um, if you're behind on your rent for that period of time from April of last year until March of this year, then please, by all means, apply to the state program. Uh, if you're behind on your rent uh, from April, April of this year moving forward, then you should apply to our program. Nick, could you talk about um, uh, the time that it takes for a for an application to be fully processed? Sure. Um, so this is, uh, as you can imagine, a pretty heavy lift on the part of the city and all of our community partners. So to date, uh, we've received, as I mentioned, about 4,500 applications. Um, and one of the things that we're seeing right now is that um, we're doing pretty well in terms of getting people to apply, but it is taking uh, a bit of time uh, before uh, the money actually gets out the door to folks. So uh, generally speaking, when you apply, you're going to get an immediate notice uh, via email telling you that uh, you have in fact uh, successfully applied to the program. Um, it'll take about another two to three weeks after that uh, to uh, find out if you are now moving forward into the verification stage uh, of the program. Uh, and then after that, uh, it may take up to six weeks uh, for you to get to the end uh, of the process. Um, but again, uh, we are trying to keep up with an unprecedented, unprecedented demand on a program that at this point uh, is a little over two months old. Um, so we are still making sure that we have uh, enough capacity in our community partners to make sure that we are doing this as efficiently as possible. But in some cases, uh, it may take a, a little longer than, than that window that I just talked about. Thank you, Nick. And could you talk about the verification process and if an applicant has difficulty providing you know, pay stubs or a lease agreement, um, uh, what else could we do to get them to the finish line? Yeah, so uh, I, again, we're trying to make this as low barrier as possible. And so we do ask 
uh, for our applicants to provide us with whatever information they may have uh, regarding proof of their tenancy, which can be uh, a written lease agreement. Um, it can also uh, be a letter from the landlord uh, telling us that this person is in fact a tenant. Uh, if they have a rent ledger, that would be proof of how much they pay in rent. And if they have uh, notices of, uh, uh, of non-payment of rent, that of course would show us the how much exactly they're behind in their rent. But in some cases, a tenant is not going to have that. Uh, so we will work with the landlord to try to get that from the landlord. Um, and we will also require if we're going to pay the, the uh, assistance directly to either the landlord or to the master tenant, uh, depending on who the, the applicant pays rent to, we will require that a W-9 be completed and sent back to us. Uh, in some cases, uh, landlords are going to refuse to provide us with, uh, with the W-9, but we will make concerted efforts to reach out to make sure that that's provided to us. But in situations where uh, we do have documentation showing the tenancy uh, and where we do have documentation showing the amount owed, um, we will provide rental assistance directly to the tenant if the landlord isn't willing to cooperate uh, with the W-9. Uh, and in instances where we may not have any documentation uh, showing uh, how much is, is owed or even documentation of a tenancy, uh, we will uh, rely on self-attestation to provide three months of rental assistance directly to that tenant. Thank you, Nick. And uh, could you elaborate on the six months of assistance available in the local program? So 12 months are available at the state for the April 2020 through March 2021 period. Could you go over because a lot of tenants are, are not familiar with the rental assistance program that gives them rent into the future? Yeah, so in, in situations where a tenant has rent that's owed uh, from some point in April of this year moving forward, we can cover however many months of back rent are owed for up to three months. Um, however, in situations where the tenant uh, also needs future rental assistance where they can show that they are housing unstable, in other words, where they are in a situation where they may uh, potentially find themselves unhoused because they still need assistance moving forward, even though they may not have any back rent that's owed. Um, we are able to provide up to three months of future rent, um, and that's in a continuous block of three months. If a tenant can show us, as I mentioned earlier, that they were uh, they had to take out a loan to cover their rent, or where they had to uh, max out their credit cards, or where they had to take money away from paying for their utilities, for example, uh, in order to cover their rent. So. Uh, again, it's six months of rent total, but that's divided into two separate uh, tracks. One is to pay back rent and then another three months to pay future rent. Thank you. Another question from an attendee is, um, are the two programs state and city funded or federal and state funded? So the, the state program, both of our programs receive funding from the federal government. Um, in, in the state program uh, sets aside money. It, it's money for the entire state, but it has money that's dedicated to San Francisco. Uh, our money comes from the federal government, but we will soon also in October uh, also have access to local funding, uh, which will allow us to continue to extend uh, the program into the future um, and hopefully be able to assist everybody that needs assistance. Thank you, Nick. Um, another question is, is there also a telephone number applicants can call if they don't have access to a computer? Yes. So uh, that website that I mentioned, San Francisco Anti-Displacement Coalition's web website, sfadc.org, uh, and I'm showing it on the screen right now. Um, there are a number of different partner organizations that folks can call. Um, and they will provide you with assistance um, and in filling out applications. And for the state program, Nick, I believe uh, housingiskey.com has uh, uh, a call center. 
That's correct. Yeah. So if you uh, if you go to housingiskey.com, they do have a call center number that does provide uh, applicants with assistance. Does the local program provide utility assistance? No, not directly, unfortunately. We don't pay for utilities in and of themselves. Uh, however, if your utilities are included as part of your rent uh, in your lease agreement or in your oral uh, uh, agreement, um, then we can pay for that so long as it's part of your rental agreement as, as part of your rent. Thank you. And the state program for its 12 month period of April 2020 through March 2021 uh, does cover do uh, cover yeah. assistance. Yeah. Let's see other questions. So one one uh, important issue uh, that has come up before is immigration status. Uh, folks are uh, curious as to whether uh, you have to be a citizen in order to apply or if you have to be documented in order to apply. Uh, and that is not the case. Anybody can apply to our program as well as the state program, uh, regardless uh, of status. Thank you, Nick. Other frequently asked questions include roommates, uh, co-tenants, subtenants, are they eligible to apply to either the state or local program? Yes, so both are eligible, or both, any number uh, of roommates are eligible to apply. So uh, in our local program, um, we, uh, can, we can allow individuals to apply uh, for themselves if they live in a roommate situation or if there are multiple families living together in one unit, they can apply as separate households. Um, and my understanding is that the state program has now uh, also adopted that standard and it does allow for individuals to apply separately, uh, even if they live together in a, a single, uh, in a single unit and it counts their income separately, just as our program counts income separately. Great. And, um... Another frequently asked question has to do with how landlords uh, access rental assistance on behalf of their tenants for either program. Yes, so uh, the state program allows either landlords or tenants to apply directly to their program. Um, our program is limited to tenants applying. Uh, we do require the, or we, at least we ask for the participation uh, of landlords and we will reach out to landlords during the verification process. Uh, but uh, currently we do not have a means for landlords to apply directly to our program. And does the city have uh, landlord outreach partners that, that could provide assistance? We certainly do. Um, we do have a, a, a partnership with Home Ownership SF, um, and they do have a number of different programs um, that uh, work with different uh, landlord uh, or landlord groupings. And we also have uh, a relationship and a partnership with the San Francisco Apartment Association. Um, and they are uh, both encouraging property owners to apply uh, to both the state program as well as encourage their tenants to apply to our program. Let's see, it looks like we have another chat. Um, I do not feel like I live in a healthy environment and I fear being unhoused at any time. I have applied for a below market rate rental unit, but I never won a lottery. After the pandemic, I feel that my income has fallen too low to qualify. Is there any way I can find a rental like BMR because of my circumstances? So we do have a uh, below market, we have an office of housing, we do have the mayor's office of housing that does assist folks who are, uh, are trying to find uh, uh, low income housing. So uh, I can, or Ugo maybe can put the number uh, to our mayor's office of housing that has various programs that can hopefully assist you with that. Sure, I could uh, provide a link to our housing counseling uh, agencies that could help uh, you navigate that. Meanwhile, Nick, I could uh, get that link while you um, cover more, if you have more. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, we're trying to do is to spread the word for our program. As I mentioned, we do have uh, over 4,500 applications so far, uh, but we know that there is a much greater need out there. 
Uh, so we are anxious to partner with uh, organizations and even with individuals to get the word out. So if you have uh, an idea of how to help us to do that, or if you uh, are a, a member or an employee of an organization and want to uh, spread the word, uh, we can certainly get outreach materials to you uh, and talk to you as well about how to potentially partner with you to spread the word um, and get to as many different communities as we can. Thank you, Nick. We have another chat. Uh, could you talk about um, uh, the application processes? I know you've covered our local one. Um, uh, could you talk about the state program and any uh, program or application improvements? Yeah, so the state program also has uh, that website, housingiskey.com. Uh, and you can apply directly as a tenant. Uh, you can also, if you don't wanna do it yourself, you can encourage your landlord to apply uh, as well. They do have a call center, as we mentioned earlier, that's listed on that website that can assist you uh, in doing that. We also have uh, uh, organizations here in San Francisco, like the Mission Economic Development Agency uh, that helps folks to apply to the state program. Um, there have been uh, some changes that have been made to the state program that have made it uh, more accessible. And we know from our conversations with uh, the state program that they've now become very efficient uh, in getting money out the door. Um, I think there was a, a public perception for a while that the state program was both very restrictive as well as not responsive. Uh, I think the state heard that. Um, they certainly heard it from us. Uh, and in response to that, um, they've now, for example, as I mentioned earlier, are, are allowing uh, individuals who live in uh, shared housing situations to apply individually. Um, they had a, a requirement earlier that uh, said that the landlord had to waive 20% of whatever rent was owed to the landlord in order uh, to qualify for the program. That requirement is no more. They're willing to reimburse the landlord 100% uh, of all rent that's owed. Um, and in terms of responsiveness, as, as uh, I said, um, they are right now getting money out the door uh, at, at, a rate, at a rate that's commensurate to our program. Um, and they have a lot of resources that they've now agreed that they're going to send our way. Um, so we are happy with the changes in, in the state program and we really encourage everybody, uh, no matter what you may have heard uh, or what the, the reputation may be of the state's program, uh, it's actually doing a really great job right now. Thank you, Nick. Um, a question is how long is the state application process? Is it longer than six weeks? Hmm. Um, I don't have a quick answer off the top of my head for that. Do it's my that? understanding uh, that yes, it is, but they're working to uh, shorten it uh, to 30 days or so. So um, uh, their process is similarly six to nine um, weeks from the time an application is submitted, um, uh, but they are uh, working to accelerate, just as Nick said, just as we are locally, uh, to make it more like a four to six week uh, process. How about Nick, um, informal living situations? Um, uh, many folks, for example, rent a couch or a garage, you know, perhaps it's not a formal uh, lease agreement. Are they eligible to apply to our yeah, program? That, that's, that's a great question. Um, they are, if somebody has a rental obligation, um, we can help them. Uh, to cover whatever uh, they've fallen behind in terms of that rental obligation. So if you are just renting from somebody uh, informally, even if it's just a verbal agreement, uh, if we can have documentation of it, that's fantastic. Uh, if that fails, if you are not able to uh, document it uh, by talking to whoever is renting that couch to you, that's still not a barrier. As I mentioned earlier, uh, through self-attestation, uh, we are, would still be able to give you up to three months of rental assistance, even under those circumstances. Thank you. Um, my understanding is that the eviction moratorium locally is until September 30th and the federal uh, moratorium is, uh, is now October 3rd. Could you clarify that? 
Yeah. Would you like to do that, Nick? Or? I, I'm not sure of I, I I'm not sure of what the the distinction is. Or what do you can you uh, take that one? Oh, sure. Uh, so we have a statewide non-payment eviction moratorium that is set to expire on September 30th. Um, we have uh, a separate and distinct general eviction moratorium um, that it looks like it's been, and we don't know the details, but it's been extended uh, through October 3rd. And it's a very limited uh, moratorium that applies to communities that are experiencing a surge of 90% or mo more, I believe, of COVID, COVID cases. Um, uh, we encourage you, since this is really kind of a, a legal matter, um, to access a legal services organization or a tenant counseling organization that's available at the Anti Displacement Coalition website uh, to kind of dive into it because the eviction moratoriums are very different. The statewide non payment eviction moratorium is a blanket non payment moratorium, right? Uh, uh, Nick had covered kind of the procedures of, you know, a 15 day notice and a declaration of COVID 19 financial impact. Etc. Whereas the state moratorium is more, um, um, the household has to qualify. They have to have a certain income. Um, it's more of a procedural thing. So um, there, there is some difference in, in timing, um, but there are different types of evictions, not just non-payment. So we encourage you to, to speak with a tenant counselor or a tenant attorney um, uh, with whom MOHCD partners. Yeah, and, and there is also a local moratorium that was enacted by the Board of Supervisors, uh, which will also expire at the end of September. And that moratorium covers any eviction that's not related to a non-COVID non-payment of rent uh, to, to LSAC cases and to cases where there's allegations of violence or the threat to the health and safety of others. Uh, but that's also, again, coming to an end at the end of September. Thank you. Nick, could you quickly cover again um, the statewide non-payment eviction moratorium for folks? Uh, I know we covered that early in the presentation, and I've noticed that several folks have joined us since. Yeah, so uh, let me go back and uh, we, can, we can run over it. Um, and as I mentioned, all of this information that I'm scrolling through is contained uh, on our rent help webpage, which is uh, sf.gov. Uh, front slash rent help. Um, so in terms of our uh, current moratorium period, um, if you are in a situation where you were not able to pay rent from March 1st to August 31st uh, of 2020, um, you do have a small requirement. You are required to provide uh, a, declar a declaration of financial distress if you receive a 15 day notice of non-payment of rent from your landlord, um, but if you do that, then you are completely protected against eviction and you don't need to worry about having to pay anything um, at that point. If you don't pay rent or if you didn't pay rent between September 1st of last year and September 30th of this year, um, you are required to pay 25% uh, of whatever rent uh, you owed uh, for that period of time. Uh, you can have kept up with it month by month, but if you didn't do that, you can pay that all in a lump sum uh, by September 30th, and you also are required to provide the landlord with a declaration of financial distress, which is basically a form telling the landlord that you're not able to pay rent uh, as a result of COVID impacts. And Nick, could you talk about uh, how the landlord can recover that rental debt, uh, even though it takes eviction off the table? Right. So the landlords will be allowed to take their tenants to small claim court, small claims court uh, to pursue the rental debt. So they can't use the non-payment as the basis for an eviction, but they may be allowed to take their tenants to small claims court uh, to get the debt paid off. Um, and so, again, we encourage everybody who's in that situation uh, who may not feel threatened by eviction, but who may have rental debt uh, to take advantage uh, of our program, to take advantage of the state program uh, because your landlord may in fact try to take you and, and would have the right 
to take you to small claims court once uh, we have the expiration uh, of the moratorium. Thank you so much, Nick and Ugo, for all this wonderful information and for being here with us today to clear some things up. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us.